Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. All praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the King, the Masa, the Sustainer, the Creator of the seven heavens and the earth, and we send peace and blessings upon His beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, my brothers and sisters, there isn't a place that I go or that I travel to, except that I'll get some mother and some father that come up to me with a broken heart and worry and concern in their eyes, and they always advise me that, please, brother, you know, can you speak about uh, you know, can you speak about children and speak about the rights of the parents? You know, speak about the youth and how our you know and how our youth are lost and you know our youth are going astray. And I get this so much, so much, and I can see the frustration in the eyes of mothers and fathers. But you know, my brothers and sisters, tonight I want to be really honest with you, and I want to open up my heart and speak about something that's quite the opposite. Because if you were to ask me, yes, while we have a lot of problems facing our young ones. I feel that there's a bigger problems with the mothers and the fathers because I believe that our youth are a reflection of what's happening at home. Yes, our children have problems, but nowhere near as big as the problems that you and I are having as mothers and fathers. You and I play a massive role in the life of children. So it's very easy to point the finger at the youth and say, look, the youth are lost and that the youth are confused and that the youth don't know where to go and what to do. But that's only because you and I are lost. And you and I are confused. And you and I don't know what to do. And if I'm a mother, and if I'm a father, and this is how I am at home, then what is it that you expect from our children? What is it? You know, there used to be a time when an orphan was someone that didn't have a mother or a father. An orphan didn't have a mother or a father. But today, we're faced with the 21st century orphan. Someone that has a mother and has a father but he might as well not as well have them. If I can count to you the amount of people that I come across, young boys and girls that have mothers and have fathers, but they're just not involved in their lives. And the heartbreak that I see in their eyes when it comes to their families. Yeah? And then when I meet their parents, their parents have the audacity to come to me and tell me, you know, you should speak to my children and tell my children about the rights of the mother and the rights of the father and how that they should be treating us. You know, my brothers and sisters, when you and I decided to get married, when you and I decided to have a family, when you and I decided to have children, you and I embarked on a massive journey, probably the biggest journey you'll ever do in your life. And it is our responsibility to be involved in the lives of our kids. Because that's our role, that's our job. And wallahi, it absolutely kills me. It breaks my heart when I see mothers and fathers that are not interested. No any. You know, if I tell you how many young boys I see and I talk to, and the young boy will look me dead in the eye and he told me, you know what, I despise my father. I hate my dad. And I tell him why, how come? He says to me, brother, there's no relationship. No relationship with my father whatsoever. I come home from school, he's not there. When I need him after school, he's not there. He's always out with his mates or he's busy at work. You know, one guy, when I was actually having a chat with him, he had a lot of problems with his father. And I said to him, man, talk to me. How come, you know, how come there's problems with your father? He says to me, from the core of my heart, I actually hate my dad. I said to him, why do you hate him for? He asked me because he's never around. My father has never once in my life had a conversation with me, ever. In fact, the only time I ever hear my father speaking to me is when I've done something wrong. When I've done something wrong, that's the only time I hear his voice. And when he does speak to me, it's put-downs. You're a loser. You're not going to be anything in your life. You're this, that, and the other. So he says to me, I get out of my way to prove to him that I am what he claims I am. He says, I will do anything. I'm prepared to do anything just to get him going, just to get him revved up, just to get him angry. This is the condition. Why? Why? People are always complaining, you know, our kids, our kids, our kids. My brothers and sisters, we need to be involved with our children. Wallahi, you know, it's very easy to point the fingers and say, look at one, two, three, four. But if we're not prepared to point the fingers at ourselves and blame ourselves, where are you as a mother? Where are you as a father? Where? Where are you? What is it that's busied you? What is it that you're so occupied with? You know, I heard a story from one of the mashayikh in South Africa. It's a true story. And the sheikh was saying, he's saying, you know, one day a father came home from work and he's been working, you know, for long hours. 
So he comes home, he's busy, he's stressed out, his business, he comes back home, he's doing his paperwork, he's crunching numbers. So his son, who's been looking forward to seeing his father all day, he comes over to his father and he's excited, you know, his dad's finally home. So he comes up to his father and he wants to, you know, he wants to communicate with him. He wants to tell him about his day and how school was. And his father wasn't interested whatsoever. So when he came close, the father turns around and says, what are you doing here? Can't you see I'm busy? Can't you see I've got things to do? Go inside to your room. Where's the iPad that I gave you? So this kid goes away, shattered, absolutely heartbroken. Then he comes back after a little while and he asks his father for some money. He says to him, Dad, you know, can I have some money? He says, what do you want money for? Didn't I give you money just the other day? Didn't I give you money the other day? He says to him, how much do you want? He says to him, well, I want $10. He says to him, 10 bucks, and this kid must have been about six, seven years of age. He says to him, $10, you know, what are you going to do with the money? And there's a, you know, there's an argument going back and forth. Anyway, eventually, he gives him the money, and then the kid goes back to his room. Now, after some time, the father comes down, the mother comes in, says to him, look, you know, your son wanted to talk to you, this, that, and the other. Then the father, after a little while, he gets up, he goes to the room, he goes to his son. His son was laying there on the bed, you know, upset, weeping. He says to my son, you know, look, I'm sorry, it's just that I'm really stressed out and, you know, I've been really busy with work. And he says to him, you know, look, what did you need the money for? So the kid lifts up his pillow and he shows his father that he's been saving up the money. He says to my father, tell me something. How much money do you earn an hour? How much do you earn an hour? He says to him, what do you want to know for? He says to him, because I've been saving up the money that you give me on a weekly basis. Because I want to buy an hour of your time. I want to buy an hour of your time that's uninterrupted. An hour that you're not on the phone. You're not busy looking at emails. You're not busy looking at WhatsApp. You're not busy looking at this, that and the other. I want an hour of your time. Wallahi, my brothers and my sisters, I ask you sincerely, honestly, when was the last time you ever had a proper conversation with your child? When was the last time you ever sat down and asked your child about their interests, about what they like and what they dislike? When? You know, somebody once told me, he said to me, when was the last time you actually played with your children? And he said to me, I don't mean play as in kick a ball. No, he said to me, I mean, sit down and do what they want you to do. Interact with them. Truth is, never. Never. You know, a kid grows up worshipping his parents. You know, if a kid, you know, wallahi, if you gave your child 24 hours of the day, he won't say no. But what happens is, is we're busy, 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 and we never ever have time. And even when we're there, and I'm speaking about myself, these are the mistakes that even I make. My wife points them out to me all the time. She says to me, Muhammad, get off your phone. Get off your phone, your kid is talking to you. Your kid is trying to ask you a question. Your kid is trying to engage you. And guess where I am? I'm busy. I'm busy. So even when I'm at home, I'm actually not there. I'm busy on my phone. What do you think this does to a child? You know, Wallahi, you could be the greatest parent on earth. You can be the greatest parent on earth. Ticking all the boxes. Parenting is the greatest job you'll ever do. Imagine when there's shortcomings. Imagine, imagine when you and I are not there. And what's worse than that, wallahi, I've seen many of us, many of us, and let's be real. Please, my brothers and sisters, we have to start being real with each other. Many of us, we live in one, many of us, we live under one roof. But guess what? We're living very, very separate lives, man. The husband is in one world, the wife is in another, and the children are just in another world altogether. And then we wonder why children are disobedient. There's no, there's no unity at home. There's no harmony at home. You want peace? You want happiness? It takes hard work. You have to strive. You have to work for it. The Prophet of Allah, he says, the best of you are those who are best to their families. And I'm the best to my family. The Prophet of Allah, the one who was truly the busiest man on earth. You know, Allah, I find it interesting. You and I, we open up a little business. A little business. That probably occupies what 10 15 you know 10 15 hours of your day and that's enough that will be enough right to justify my bad relationship with the masjid bad relationship with my prayer with my quran with my wife with my families with my children with my because of a little business imagine the prophet of allah imagine the man who was truly the busiest man on earth the man that had to run the affairs of the whole ummah the man that was you know 
the one that sallallahu alayhi wasallam you know this is the man that was you know receiving revelation dealing with the people giving dawah right walking along the streets sorting out the um problems left right and center this person's getting married this person's getting divorced you know conflict over here conflict over there this was a man 24 hours around the clock and yet he still had time for his wives he still had time for the kids he still had time for every single aspect and that's our life and i know some of you now are listening thinking man that sounds like a lot of work yeah well hello it's called parenthood you know wallahi my brothers we all want our children to be the best Trust me, your child will be exactly as you are. Look at yourself in the mirror. Look at your lifestyle. What you see is a very good indication of what your child is going to be. So ask yourself, where are your priorities, man? Wallahi, where are our priorities? Our children more than ever, more than ever, especially in the Western world, they need us so much. They need our attention. They need our affection. They need our love. They need our understanding. They need us so much. And where are we? Where are we? I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. Busy with what? Wallahi, busy with what? The greatest investment you will ever have. Are your children, your family, your wife? Yeah, I give my hard work. I give the cream of my hours. I give the cream of my time and my money to wear to anything and everything other than that which is truly, really important for me. Wallahi, my brothers, we need to wake up. We need to wake up and we need to recalibrate our compass because the direction that we're heading in, not only are we losing ourselves, not only are we losing our children, but we're destroying the ummah at large. Our kids need us. Wallahi, our children need us so much. 21st century orphan. 21st century orphan. Someone that has a mother and has a father, but they're not there, man. They're not there. Another kid, wallahi, another kid, that I spoke to once, and this kid came from a beautiful home, father works very hard, built them a beautiful home, had a brand new car, everything that you and I are striving for to provide for our children, everything, and yet the relationship between, between this young boy and his father, wow, wow, it was, like, it, was, it was like two enemies at home, you know? And then when I asked him, I said to him, why, why the hatred, why the hatred? You know, your father works so hard. He's provided you with everything. Why? He said to me, brother, I don't want the house. What good is the house? What good is the car? What good is the money and the brand new shoes? He said to me, brother, I don't want this. He said to me, I want a father. That's what I want. I want a father. I want someone that I can talk to. I want someone that I can hang out with. I want someone that I can share my interests with. I want someone that's eager to come home and talk to me just as I am eager to come home and talk to him. But he's never there. He's always busy. He's always busy and then he tells me, well, I'm doing all this for you. And I'm telling him that I don't want the house. So stop working the overtime because I'm not interested. I actually want you. I want your time. I want your time. I need you. I need your effort. I need you to be involved in my life now. Where are we? What is it that's busying us? What is it? Wallahi, I know of fathers. Fathers here in the area, man, let's be real. Let's stop beating around the bush. I know brothers, brothers, you know, he's 35, 40. He's got three, four kids. And he's hanging out with his mates and it's not haram. So don't shoot me now. Oh my God, he's saying it's haram to have fun and to hang out. No, no, no. But he hangs out with his mates every single night, bro. Every single night. I see brothers, you know, I see brothers, and, and again, it's not haram, I'm not saying this is haram, you know. But I see brothers hanging out at cafes and restaurants, and I don't mean like a one-off. We all do it, you know, everyone goes to dinner, and everyone, that's fine. But I see brothers hanging out at cafes every single day, and they're married. And I think, brother, do you, like, you don't have a life? You don't have children to go attend to? You don't have a wife? You don't? You don't have anything better to do? What are we doing, bro? Hanging out with the boys. Fathers, wallahi, fathers that are 35, 40 years old. He's got children at home. Children at home. And he's hanging out with the boys. Smoking pot. Playing cards. Playing PlayStation. Playing PlayStation. And again, you know, wallahi, you know, like if it was a one-off, you know, I'm catching up with friends. Fine, bro. We all need it. We're all human beings. 
But every night religiously, religiously, until 2-3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and then the brother's got the nerve to come tell me, brother, you know, you, you know, we need to work on the children. You know, we need to work on our youth. Our youth are lost. Are they really? What do you expect? Wallahi, our children are a reflection of us. They're a mirror image. You know? We send our kids to, to amazing private Islamic schools. And that's fine. You know, we send them there and I'm sure you got great intentions, you know. And we invest big money and big effort and, you know, it's the best school in the country and Islamic schools, you know, because I want the school to teach my child deen. You're kidding yourself. The deen that your child will learn is the deen that you're living. And I've seen it how many times. Parents who throw their children in Quran memorization schools. Yeah? And the kid memorizes the Quran, but guess what? No Quran in his life whatsoever. You know why? Because your child, you know, sometimes we underestimate just how witty and how smart our children are. You know? Your child's not a fool. He sees what you throw me in Quran school while you're indulging in work and in dunya and in lifestyle and in this, that and the other. Right? And really most of us, and I know I'm generalizing, most of us we throw our kids in Quran school, not because deep down I love the Quran and I want the Quran, because you yourself would be joining him. No, 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 no. I throw my kids in these, you know, memorization schools, generally, right? So that I can boast in front of my friends that, yeah, look, you know, I may not be the most religious guy, but hey, look at my son, mashallah. Big round of applause for my son. He's a hafid. Ooh, mashallah, mashallah. My son's a hafid. But then you, how much Quran do you know? How much Quran have you memorized? What, you think your kid doesn't see this? Do you? Do you think your kid doesn't see this? What is it? You know, our young girls, our daughters. You know how much our daughters, oh, Wallahi, you know, I speak to brothers, ah, Alhamdulillah, you know, my daughter has a good relationship with her mom. I say, yeah, that's good. But what about with you, brother? Does she have a good relationship with you? And most brothers, you know, they give me this stare, you know, like a deer in headlights, you know. So what about you? What about your relationship with your daughter? When was the last time you showed your daughter affection? When was the last time you showed her love? When? When was the last time you actually sat down and had a decent conversation with her? When was the last time you sat down and you reassured your daughter? When? When was it? Ah, the wife, the wife, the wife, the wife. Habibi, how much can your wife possibly handle? How much? Wallahi, you know, we... we Wallahi, it's so sad. Wallahi, it's so, so, so sad. We're messed up, man. We're messed up. Wallahi, our priorities are all over the place, man. And then when, you know, and then when things go south, huh, we start pointing the fingers at anyone and everyone, blaming anyone and everyone except who? Except me, bro. Except me. Except me. My kids, this is my life. This is my true investment. These are the ones who, you know, you know. But you will only get out that which you put in. 21st century orphan. 21st century orphan. Widows, widows. The 21st century widow. You know who the 21st century widow is? Yeah, yeah, she's married. Yeah, she has a, a man who's supposed to be her husband. Yeah, but she might as well, you know, he might as well be dead in. Wallahi, actually, some women would actually be better off if their husbands were actually dead. Tied down uh, the 21st century widow. Why? Why? We're so busy, bro. We're so busy. We're occupied, consumed with all the wrong things. My family. The family, bro. The family is the core. The family is the core of the civilization. It's the core of the community. Your family. How are things at home? Is there love? Is there mahabba? Is there unity? Is there understanding? I'm busy. In fact, many of us, we come home and we can't wait to run away. I can't wait to get out of there. Look, I'm not saying it's easy. Wallahi, it's not easy. Being a father and a wife and a husband and... All of the, wallahi, it's not easy. But we have to at least try, man. We have to at least try, wallahi, if we really care, bro. If we really care, you know. You know, I get people, I get people who come up to me and tell me, you know, my husband doesn't show my children affection. 
you know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, I'll be out with my kids and, and I'll hug my child and I'll kiss my child and people look at me strange, you know. And wallahi subhanAllah, you know, there's actually a hadith of the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, when he was kissing his grandson. He was kissing his grandson, you know, al Hassan al Hussein. He was kissing one of them. So an Arab came to him, you know, and he says to him, Prophet of Allah, you kiss your children. He says, yes, of course I do. He says, um, by Allah, I have 10 kids. I have 10 kids. I've never kissed any of them once. What did the Prophet of Allah say to him? He says, um, what can I do? What can I do? What can I say if Allah has snatched mercy from your heart? Allah, it's amazing, you know. Amazing. Your wife. <laughs> the one that's most deserving of your affection and your love and your jokes and your comments. You know, I see brothers, <laughs> you know, because I'm a tradie, right? So I'm a tradesperson. So I see brothers, you know, out there in work. You know, when a customer calls him and it's a female, Allahu Akbar, the adab and the akhlaq and the smiles. Hi, Joanne, how you doing? Great, lovely to hear. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, don't worry about it. Amazing. I think, wow, this guy, man, his wife. His wife must be, must be in cloud nine. Yeah? And then as soon as he gets up, you know, as soon as he gets off the phone and then his wife calls, you see the change of look on his face. You see the ghadab. You see the misery in his eyes. Yeah, what do you want? Yeah, what do you want? The aggression. You know? It's no longer speaking. It's almost like barking, you know? Roof. Whoa. Whoa. What happened? Ah, it's the wife. So Joanne... Right? Joanne gets your, mashallah, she gets your love and your hikmah and your wisdom and your... But the one that's more deserving of it, what does she get? What does she get? She gets nothing, you know. Nothing. And then we worry. And then we complain and we argue. Priorities, my brothers, wallahi. Priorities, my brothers and my sisters. You know, stop blaming the youth. Stop complaining about the children. Because wallahi, if we better ourselves, if we start fixing ourselves, if we start getting involved, if we start paying attention and listening and helping one another, and, and you'll see a great change in our children. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our kids and to bless us. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaha.